Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle, a very exciting one. So let's get started. If you want to pause the video, you can. All right. So a square is inscribed in the region between two quarter circles and a unit square as shown. Find the side length of the square. I think needless to say, we do have two quarter circles with radius one, right? Uh, because they're inside a unit square. So, as always, let's make some meaningful connections, right? So I'm going to start by connecting some points, uh, and I'm hoping to get something nice from this, okay? All right, so what am I going to do first? First of all, I'm going to connect the point where uh, one of the vertices touch one of the quarter circles, so like this. Let me go ahead and connect these two. Okay, that's one connection. I'll drop a perpendicular from there, kind of following, extending the square side length. Okay, sometimes the, it just decides to zoom in or out. Okay, like this one. Okay, so that will be helpful. And let's name some lengths here. For example, um, let's call this X. Okay, awesome. We're trying to find the side length of the square. Let's call that X on all sides. Cool. And we don't know this height here, so let's call that H. And this part, okay, what about this part? From this point to that point. Well, since that's X and I made a rectangle here, this should be X as well. And we know that the radius of the quarter circle is one because it's inside the unit square. So this should be one minus X. And the hypotenuse should also be the radius of the quarter circle, which is one. Awesome. So I basically got a right triangle. So here's the plan. I'm going to write uh, the Pythagorean theorem for this triangle, but that's not enough. I do need another right triangle, and I'll get that, and we'll put it together. Okay? Awesome. And this is how it works. This is also H. I'm going to mark that point right there, and then connect it to this point down here, so it's going to look like this. Okay? Now, notice that I got another right triangle here, didn't I? Okay, beautiful. Now, how can I use those right triangles? Well, Pythagorean theorem is the answer, right? Obviously. So let's go ahead and write down two equations. So these are the triangles that I'm talking about. This is the first one, or the second one, maybe, rather. Okay. And the other one is this one. So the plan is to use these two triangles to solve for x. But let me tell you something. This is not going to be very easy. Okay, so I'll keep watching. All right, so let's see what we get from here. Let me use the first one first. That's going to look like h squared plus 1 minus x squared equals 1. And the second one tells me x squared plus h plus x squared equals... Okay, what about this length, right? Okay, now... This is an important one because, uh, as you see here, okay, how am I going to explain that, right? Okay, that's also one, but why is it one? I should probably draw it differently, but let me show you the diagonal. Sorry, I don't want to make it confusing, so let me use a different color maybe. Okay, so if you make this connection, this is one of the common problems that are asked. Okay, you'll notice that there are the diagonals, right? So the same length. So notice that. This orange diagonal runs from this point to that point. Therefore, it is actually the radius of the uh, quarter circle. So, so I could probably erase this, right? Hopefully without erasing other stuff. <laughs> Let's see if I can do that. Okay. Maybe I can get rid of this. Okay, cool. And then focus more on this one because this one looks better. Why? Uh, you can see that it's actually the radius. Right, so let's go ahead and shift it over to this one. Okay, so what am I getting? X squared plus X plus H squared is equal to one. It was kind of harder to see in the other one, but they're the same. Okay, cool. So what am I gonna do now? Well, I'm going to solve the system, but let's go ahead and do this first because from the you know, first equation, I'm kind of getting something nice. So maybe I should just, uh, Consider this, let me erase that one, just set it equal to one, and then I will change colors, 
go into this one. Okay, here we go. So from here, if I try to isolate h squared, that's going to give me 1 minus 2x plus x squared equals 1. 1 cancels out. And what I can do is I can write h squared as 2x minus x squared. If I square root both sides, then I'm able to write h in terms of x, which is cool because I'm going to use this in my equation, right? I do have another equation. So I have a system, which is quadratic. And to be able to solve the system, I'm going to substitute this for h, okay? So that's the, that's the plan. Uh, but again, uh, it won't be very simple. Okay, so when I substitute that into the second equation, I have x squared plus h. So that's going to be the square root of 2x minus x squared. That is just h, right? Plus x, and then quantity to squared is equal to 1. So now, I end up with a single variable, and I'm trying to solve for x, so things look good, right? But we have some radicals we need, to, we need to get rid of. Not only that, we also need to, you know, um, square this expression. So let me go ahead and do this. While I square this, so let me take an extra step here. I would like to leave this alone and write it as 1 minus x squared. Let's see if that's going to help us. It may or may not, but that's okay. So now, this, we're going to square this as a plus b. So it should be the a squared plus 2ab, right? You know the formula, plus b squared. b squared is going to be x squared, right? And then uh, this should equal 1 minus x squared. Cool. So far, so good. Now, the negative x squared and the positive x squared cancels out. But this is not good enough. I want to, you know, get rid of the radical. So I'd like to isolate it. So let's go ahead and do that. Isolate the radical. In other words, subtract 2x from both sides. Nice. Now, at this point, I'd like to square both sides and find x. And solving x will be an interesting task. So, let's go ahead and switch to a different color here and square both sides. That's what I need to do at this point. Obviously, you know, uh, extraneous roots will creep in. We'll, we ha we'll have to clean them up and find a solution that looks legitimate. Okay, so this is a product, so I can square it like a product like this. And then this is like three terms. So I'd like to square it like a plus b plus c. So it's going to look like a squared plus b squared plus c squared, right? Plus 2ab, which will be that, plus 2ac, which is that, right? Okay. And then plus 2bc, which will be positive for x cubed. Awesome. Let me go ahead and distribute. 8x cubed minus 4x to the fourth power. Aha, uh -huh, we got a cortic. Great. Okay. So now these two can be simplified, right? I can just write it as 2x squared minus 4x plus 4x cubed. And then I'll put everything on the same side, obviously. So since this is a positive side for x to the fourth, I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side. That's going to look like 5x to the fourth minus, right? Uh, 5x to the fourth, uh, I'm going to bring in this over here, let's see, okay, 5x to the fourth plus 4x cubed, so I got this and this and this, and then I will bring over the x cubed, oh, when we subtract the 8x cubed from this, it's going to be negative 4x cubed, so let's fix that, it's going to be negative 4x cubed, and then I'll be getting what, 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. This one, this one, and that one. Okay, everything is taken care of, and I get everything on the same side, so it's good. Now, we do have a quartic equation, obviously, which is not easy to solve. Quartic formula, uh, you don't even want to even wanna use it, right? Okay, what are we going to do? Well, one thing to always keep in mind is looking for integer solutions. Now, when you look at this problem, you're kind of going like, what is the first thing I need to check? The first thing you need to check is the sum of the coefficients. Because, look at this, 5 minus 4 equals 1, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 4 equals negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 equals 0. Beautiful. Now, was this planned? No, it just came up like that. Okay, I just realized later on, oh, okay, x equals 1 is a solution. Why? For the very obvious reason. When you plug in x equals 1, it satisfies. So what we can do is, we can actually go ahead and uh, divide this expression by x minus 1, and then get the cubic, but um, we can do it this way too. 
So we can kind of write it like, okay, 5x to the fourth minus 5x cubed. I'm going to manipulate this one so that I can get an x minus 1 factor here. And then I just need to uh, adjust it. So I need to add an x cubed, but then I need to subtract x squared. And then to get to x squared, I need to adjust it. So I need to add 3x squared, but then I want to subtract 3x because the goal is always like, okay, I want to get x minus 1, x minus 1 from all these things. Does that make sense? At the end, it's going to be clearing. So don't worry about it. So now I got negative 3x, but to get negative 4x, I need to subtract. And finally, everything comes in place. Beautiful. Everything comes together. We're good. So this is going to be like x cubed times, actually 5x cubed times, x minus 1 plus x squared times x minus 1 plus 3x times. I know this works because I know that x minus 1 is a factor, right? So I do know ahead of time that this is going to work. Okay. Now I can take out the x minus 1, obviously, and this is going to give me a cubic, which is a little easier to handle, right? Hopefully. And this is my result. Okay, cool. So we know that x equals 1 is a solution, but go back here. Can the side length for the square be 1? No, it will be meaningless because then it will just cover the entire unit square, right? Then we wouldn't have these. So we're not going to accept x equals 1, so we're going to reject that. We're going to focus on the other solutions. But wait, this is a cubic, right? And it doesn't really solve easily. I mean, I've tested it for you guys. So I'm going to save that part. But let me just tell you this. You can tell there's a discriminant for a cubic equation. You can look, look it up on Google or I can include some you know, links in the description, which I will actually for the solution of this equation, I will include the link down below so you can check it out. But you can tell whether uh, a cubic equation will have real solutions uh, like three real or one real and two complex and if there is any uh, double or triple roots. Okay, so you can tell. Uh, in this case, we do have one real solution, which is valid. And that solution, uh, again, I'm not, I'm going to save you the trouble here because that is quite complicated. And I try to simplify it a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look very good. So bear with me while I write the value of x. That is going to be the side length of the square. All right. So it's going to look like this. Well, how did I know that? Again, I'll put it in the description so you can kind of check it out. You'll see the link down below. And it, comment if you have any questions please feel free to comment and sometimes i get asked questions like okay how am i going to send the picture i can't do it in youtube right so if you want to post the solution to a problem or if you have any comments or ideas and you want to share one of the things you can do is you can tweet me at cybermath right like this okay and then mention that, okay, um, I want to respond to this video. You can even do put it underneath the video because I always share the video with a tweet link. So what you can do is you can mention me, send a tweet, and then uh, I will include that link or you can do the same thing in the YouTube comment sections. That way we'll have access to the picture and all that stuff. Okay, make sense? Cool, so feel free to do that. Now I'm gonna write the solution for you guys, so bear with me. Uh, I'll use parentheses here because the whole thing is basically multiplied by one over 15. And then now we got something like this, negative one minus 22 times the cube root of two divided by 101 plus 15 square root of 69. And you might be like, is he just making it up? No, I said that I was gonna include the link, right? So you can kind of check it out. Okay, awesome. And then this is not the whole thing, obviously. We're going to add something else to it. And that's going to be the cube root of 404 plus 60 times the square root of 69. And notice that this expression here is actually four times the radical expression at the bottom here. And then I'm just going to close the parentheses. And that's going to be our solution. Okay, you can check it out in the description below. Let me know what you think. Comment like and subscribe if you haven't done so and this is the end of it thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and we'll continue to give you more exciting videos like this but please let me know what you think about this and then i'll see you soon in the next video until then be safe take care bye bye